Right, it's your Geordie Journals. Someone else's back garden today. <laughs> I'm so impressed, honestly. He's not only an amazing journalist for the Shields Gazette, but oh, me, me and Don are, uh, me and Jordan are blown away by this uh, amazing back backyard that you've put together here. Cheers. In Gossa, that is not. You're not really seeing much of it. You, you like don't. That. The lights were on before, but it was flickering in the background. It was. I didn't want to upset you guys watching out there. But so. Don's done some some job here in the the back streets of Gosforth, where we are. Yeah. Part of the Gosforth mob is Dom. Right, let's talk. Football, there's been a little link. We're gonna, as I've said so far this summer, as the wind picks up, it wouldn't be the Geordie Journals without some kind of uh, element getting involved. We've said we're gonna do some shorter, quick fire videos um, this summer. I've already waffled for a minute, <laughs> so it might be on longer than we anticipated. But I think we're gonna talk a little bit about the goalkeeper situation before I ask the opinion of these two guys, because there's been some fresh links from a friend of the show. Craig Hope I've yes. seen in the Daily Mail with regards to James Trafford and potential bids and movement in that respect so we'll address that one before that I'll mention Four Rivers Financial Planning as will be in the you tell me top right top left where's it go these days top right top right. Place right. From the top right top right yeah should have been yeah top right just where I put my goal it's in James's no. park <laughs> But we don't talk about that. About yeah, we don't, we don't talk about that. We don't talk about that. Four of us financial planning. Need any investment, any pension advice, just go down in the bio. You'll see the link. You'll see the emails. He doesn't want any PSR questions, but he is a financial expert, so fire him on just for a laugh. Right. James Trafford. What we saying? And what we're saying about the goalkeeper situation <clears> as well. Maybe, Dom, you were talking about off, off air. The, the idea of people who are leaving, people who are going, and that's maybe round that up first I think for a while for the past few seasons I think the goalkeeper situation has been a bit of an issue I think even go back before the takeover Martin Dubravka was injured it was always how is this situation going to be addressed Martin Dubravka came back in and generally had a good first half season under Eddie Howe then Mick Pope comes in and it starts a new dynamic Mick Pope does a brilliant job for the best part of 18 months then gets injured Martin Dubravka comes in and then big questions are asked what the sort of future holds of him at the club. Loris Carius obviously is going to be released at the end of the month. Nick Pope's only played one Premier League game, one competitive game in the last six months and missed out in the England squad. What's his sort of fitness situation? And yeah, obvious, the obvious links as well with the likes of James Trafford, Georgie Marmadashvili Mar Marmadashvili from Valencia I mean we could be saying that wrong but it feels right Okay <laughs> I've seen it written down I can spell it I can't <laughs> quite say it um, and Ra Aaron Ramsdale's a long, long term admirer as well, um, long term target of the club as well so yeah this goalkeeper situation I think is is almost a never ending when is it going to be addressed and I think it's an interesting one heading into the summer because I think there's question marks pretty much over every goalkeeper at the club with the exception of Mark Gillespie who's triggered a new deal who will just be a, a third choice goalkeeper. Will he be third or fourth? Yeah. That's the yeah, interesting yeah, thing. Yeah, true, true. And uh, Lois Carius who's obviously leaving as well. Jordan, your thoughts on the goalkeeper situation? Yeah, I think, I think it needs a, a refresh in the summer. We'll go on to the links with James Trafford. I know there's a lot of fans out there that aren't too happy with Newcastle's reported bid, but either should be doing better. But I put out on social media today and I stand by it. I think, I think I, I see the logic in signing James Trafford, and this is on the proviso that Nick Pope stays fit. Nick Pope is a top quality goalkeeper, and I think in many ways is probably overlooked. I, I, I think he's been a, without being totally a transformative signing. I think he took the goalkeeping level to a totally he did. new, different level. He really did. It, the, it, gets, it almost gets so overlooked how it does, much of yeah. an improvement he was in that department. So for me, I'd, I'd be really reluctant to write him off, but I think there's, look, he's had two shoulder injuries in career now. Once you do it, once, once you do it twice, you know, there's concern that's going to happen again. So I think that's one of the things that Newcastle need to keep an eye on now. But if Nick Pope is guaranteed to be fit, I think James Trafford as an understudy makes total sense. I think a lot of people have written him off because he's had a really difficult season at Burnley, but he's a very highly rated goalkeeper, still only 21. 
was included in the England setup. Okay, didn't go to the Euros, but was still highly rated enough to be in and around that squad. Picked over Nick Pope as well. Yeah. Which injuries, fitness probably came into it a lot. But and, and I think goalkeepers don't tend to really come into their own until they get a little bit older. I think what was Nick Pope doing when he was 21? I think he's York, probably yeah. York City. York City was he? Yes. So, I, so it's levels, isn't it? 21 playing in the Premier League, although he did get dropped for bad form towards the back end of the season, is no no small feat for a goalkeeper. I, I think there's a lot of light about James Trafford. I think his distribution's good. He's a big boy as well. Yeah. I didn't realise he was so big. Six foot five, six foot six, he's a big boy. Nick Pope height. Yeah, it is, that's what I mean. It, and that's one of <clears throat> Pope's real strengths, isn't it? That, that he came in and just filled that goal out, which we'd never seen before, really, at Newcastle yeah. United. Yeah. The best goalkeepers I've seen, Shea Given, etc., weren't massive. Yeah. Yeah, they were big, they were big, big by our standards, but <laughs> in terms of goalkeepers in the Premier League and world football, not the biggest. So I, I was quite impressed. I'm yeah. quite impressed by that, but, uh, from Trafford. Just, just another point I want to make on the Trafford situation, I think. To bring him in for, say, a reported 20 million, which is reported the asking price, I think it allows you to commit, because it sounds like Newcastle's budget, of course, it's going to be potentially tight this summer with PSR rules, and they're still there, they're not going away any anytime soon. And I think there's so many different areas in Newcastle's team that need strengthening, so I would rather, again, guarantee that Nick Porter is fit, sign a backup, an understudy who can, who's got potential, because that's what you'd be buying with Trafford, you'd be buying potential. I think Tavern is understudy still highly rated, young, and there's a lot of like. And then 20 million and many, isn't that much money these days in football? And I don't think it is anyway. Mm -hmm. And I would rather you get your goalkeeping situation sorted, you have a backup, an understudy, and then you look to commit what you've got your budget to, signing an attacker, a right winger, I think is an absolute priority for Newcastle this summer. Possibly even a centre back, depending on, uh, obviously like Kelly Deal, which I think is going to get done, but I still think Newcastle will probably do need a centre half. So for me, Trafford, 20 million, guaranteed they post fit, yes, and it allows Newcastle to go and spend money elsewhere on the team. Yeah, I don't think 20 million, I think you're right, 20 million isn't a whole lot of money considering if you do sign Trafford, it will probably be on a long term contract, you amortise that, it's probably only digging maybe four or five million into the, the PSR calculations. But for me, it's another going back to our frustrations with the last summer transfer window where it's Lewis Hall, Tino Livermento, you're spending a lot of money on players for what they could be, not what they are right now. And in, for the in, bench. Yeah. <laughs> so, it Newcastle... Is. But Nick Pope is still a excellent goalkeeper. Yes, yes. Is. yes. It's, it's more is. just spending the money. The 20 million could be spent better elsewhere, in my opinion. Newcastle need to improve on what they delivered last season and without European football potentially they could naturally do that but ultimately they need to improve on the pitch and finishing seventh again won't be good enough so I think they need to improve as best they can the starting 11 and James Trafford is guaranteed not to do that. How much would it cost you to go out and sign a number one? So my point on that one is goalkeepers £20 million pound. I, I don't know the facts on this I'm going to be honest but I bet if we somehow or somebody else out there jump in the comments if you want would put in the list of the most expensive goalkeepers in world football I bet you 20 million pound for a goalkeeper isn't, is, far, off, isn't yeah. far off it might not be top 10 but it, it wouldn't surprise us if it was goalkeepers don't go for that much money they just don't no there's been a few outliers Anana was the most recent one but before that you're talking Edison and Allison. Um before that you're probably talking there's probably been a couple of those, yeah, De Gea, Buffon. There hasn't been that many plus £30 million, pound, for example, goalkeepers. There's probably only been, I don't know, I'm not going to say a number because I'm probably wrong. But it doesn't, goalkeeping doesn't, and I think the price of goalkeepers has, it, it reached a peak and it went really high and I think it's come back down again. I don't think goalkeepers are going for big money now. doesn't mean it's not a key position, it massively is. I actually think, I, when I first heard about James Trafford, I didn't like it because I watched him closely last season seen a fair bit of Burnley and I didn't like what I saw from him. I was surprised that they weren't playing the lad who they played the season before, who although who, who made mistakes himself when he came in. But you knew what you were getting from him. He was excellent for them in that promotion season and was a very he was a big risk taker in everything that he did and he showed that again at the end of the season. But I was surprised because I didn't feel like Trafford felt like a big upgrade on what they already had. Mm. And I think that showed that they both played a half a season each or two thirds and a third. I think they stuck with Trafford longer than they probably should have and they actually improved their results when they changed Trafford out of the team. That's not a reflection on Trafford. 
there's obviously a lot of people in English football like him. He is clearly the next generation, the next best one. But it doesn't always work that those players come to fruition quite quickly. You know, we're seeing the, the Premier League's littered with these players who are the next best. Henderson, who is in the England squad, is the one that's took some time. It's took him years to really get a, a, a place to call home. And even this season hasn't always been the first choice at yeah. Crystal Palace. Sam Johnston's been there. He was he was the next best at one point. There's, the English football is littered with him. Newcastle had Freddie Woodman years ago. Yeah. It doesn't always mean just because you're England's next best. It, Freddie Woodman was was everyone thought he was going to be England's next goalkeeper. It's turned out he's a he's a mid to top end championship goalkeeper. That's it. That is what he is. It's a funny position goalkeeper by the way as well. That has to be said that it's not like you can go into a squad and, and do a job somewhere else or think I'll get a game if he gets injured I'll get in there it's a very lone position and, and you're either in or you're out so you do tend to get goalkeepers will play below that level and sometimes because they know yeah. they're going to play James Trafford is very young as you mentioned I didn't like the look of it when it was it came along my you know I'm, I'm not on the tools like you guys are these days I used to be I still hear bits and bobs. I still hear bits and bobs. And you hear bits from some of the usual suspects in terms of sources. Do I believe them? You never know. But there are concerns that I've heard about Nick Pope and that injury. And I think it's obvious concerns. That's not just common sense. There are genuine people talking about saying this second shoulder injury is a, is a big concern. And it's not just that he won't recover from it because they suspect that he will. It's about the load and about how quickly he can play a, f a big set of games. So the concern comes, will he come into the team and be able to play from game one to game 38? That's the concern. So I think Newcastle are going to need a second choice next season if they stick with Nick Pope. Or do they... Do they well, the, the, the biggest concern I'm waffling. I always do. 15 minutes. What I would say is... Do you, is Nick Pope the man? Is Nick Pope the man who's going to take you to where you want to go? And if Nick Pope isn't the man that's going to take you where you want to go, and that man becomes available this summer, you spend a chunk of your budget in. Well, that's the man who takes it, even if it sets off another fire. Because if you sign that man who's going to take you where you think you're going to go, then Nick Pope leaves. But then you get you get your money back on Nick Pope, and you sign another, and you just move on and you keep developing. I think I think they've got to be ruthless in some ways, and I love Nick Pope. I think he's fantastic, and I really hope he stays and does really well. But given that there's concerns, given that do I think he is the answer to all of Newcastle United's problems, with the end goal being we want to be right up there, mm. I'm not so sure that he is. So if a man becomes available who you think is then go for it. Yeah. He's a similar level of signing and some people might not like this to like a Dan Byrne. Like he's that intermediary. He's not quite an Isak or a Bruno. He's a, he will do a job. He will help us progress. But in terms of that next level, I think there's definite room for improvement. But I think if Nick Pope is indeed fully fit, another season of him be, be being great. back it'd would be still be good. And he, he helped Newcastle get fourth at the end of the day. So, and I agree with that when you said like the, the, it's, there's not enough respect put on his name, and, and that might just sound like I've been disrespectful. I'm not actually. I'm just looking at the bigger picture, and I think sometimes you've got to do that. But there isn't enough respect put on how transformative he was. We didn't. We we all said it. We didn't know if he was any better than Dubravka. I uh, actually know. was but, quite but an adamant. Yeah. Oh, and it's 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 levels. Yeah, it really yeah. is. I, I just think you've got to wait up this summer. I'll ask you guys this question because it goes out of my point. Would you rather Newcastle go out and sign a first choice goalkeeper this summer? Or would you rather went out and sign out a, a right winger? A uh, starting right winger? It's, budget, about, it's though, priority. Yeah. Because so, in a priority situation, yeah, in a priority right situation. Winger, I think, I yeah. think this, and, this, and, I, and, I and I think that's what Newcastle are weighing up. And I yeah. think, right, we'll get another season out with Nick Pope. In that time, hopefully, James Traffer will develop where he maybe does challenge next season. And then you go out and sign your, your right forward. But you need a second choice keep, keeper, don't you? If Martin Dubravka leaves, which he could, could do, Mark Gillespie is a second choice goalkeeper when you've got a if you say like a flight risk first choice goalkeeper becomes a very dangerous situation it does because then then you, you all of a sudden become an, it's Martin Dubravka again for but worse. six weeks and yeah no offence to Mark Gillespie but his highest level is the Scottish Premiership yeah it is and he was alright up there I remember speaking when he signed people were like that's a surprise but they, move they might, they might do that they might go for a free agent as a third choice again there's plenty out there there's plenty of free agent goalkeepers out mm. there there's one leaving you. Southampton me <laughs> <laughs> not me <laughs> He's yeah. a good keeper when he puts on the gloves. <laughs> Doesn't like to admit it though. No, I'm not. I'm not a good goal. You went red. I've actually went red. <laughs> no, I didn't. You're, you're making us blush here. 
I can't take the compliments. No. <laughs> right, where are we going? I think, I think, I think in an ideal world you would sign a right winger. You wouldn't if you had to choose one, one or the other. But I think the way that they're going about it is that they're very fluid. That's that's the understanding of it. And I think if something becomes available, even if it's not a priority, Tino Livermento last summer is the perfect example of that. He was not a priority last summer, and but he became available, and it was one that Ashworth really pushed for. I know that for a fact. And it was probably one of the, 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 the best things that he did at the football club, really, was pushing through that deal. Knew him very much from the England setup. But yeah, I think I think a goalkeeper is a priority. Two goalkeepers will be signed, you would imagine, this summer. Yeah. I think a lot depends. Look, that, I, I'm saying that as if it's fact. If Martin Dubravka stays, which he's got about a year left on his contract, yeah. if, if he stays, then and, and Nick Pope's probably going to be all right in the make that assessment. I mean, it might be, it might be the case. I, I just don't see it. I'm going to be honest now. I'm thinking, about, I don't see it. If Trafford comes in, or if they're looking at Trafford, that's Dubravka gone. Dubravka doesn't sit here as a number three. No, Trafford doesn't not. sign sign as a number three. No. So if you're going to go for Trafford, that's the end of that. Marma Dashvili, uh, we've said, we said on the one where you were missing, the one where you, we were Coming. building campfires and all sorts in the in the trees. Got a fire over doing. there if you want. Yeah, right. Should put it on. It's a bit chilly here on Tyneside. <laughs> We're actually sitting here and you're gone because we're, we're prepping to go out, aren't we? Cellar, cellar, night. I wasn't going to, I wasn't going to say what that was, but no, we're going yeah. to the cellar. We're going to the cellar. <laughs> we might do something video-wise if you see this before, see it after. You might already watch the video. Depends on the internet. It certainly <laughs> does. But yeah, we're sitting here prepping to go out and just chewing the fat. Well, we're actually just recording the type, and I hope he's like this. We're just kind of recording the type of conversations that would already be sitting here having. We're just pure football anoraks. <laughs> really, <aren't we> just <laughs> I think we've all got a little bit of a different opinion on Trafford as well because I feel I feel like I'm in favour if Nick Pope is fit and understudy. I feel like you guys sort of. I want. just new a lot has been made this week. If you want to get onto it, of Newcastle's budget, what they can spend, and I think twenty million pound on a goalkeeper, even if you can't amortise it, is a lot of money. Like you say, and I think when there are bigger priorities elsewhere in the squad, I think they should be addressed but I, I, I think foremost. you could sign a goalkeeper for 20 million and still have the money to go out and sign a marquee right forward if you'll you like, have or, to sell someone at that point I think but I think, well, I think well, oh, they'll sell someone yeah, anyway but you'd happen. absolutely have to sell someone and you, there's no guarantees in football and I think I'd rather Newcastle get a position they absolutely need than get a backup for a position where they're already quite strong in with a bit of question marks yes, yeah. who do you think will go first? Well, in terms of which player I think which player I think will leave I think it'll be Armour oh I was teeing you up there I thought you'd do it oh okay <laughs> oh well, well no let's get into it why not yeah let's get into it yeah. the people who read this might not write you can still write it yeah <laughs> let's get it out man yeah let's get into it yeah so yeah from from what I've heard I, it's a possibility that Kieran Trippi I will go to Saudi Arabia this summer um, I'm not going to go into the Things I've heard, sort of, in his, on his personal life, etc. But it sounds like it's all teed up for him, but to him, for other stresses potentially go there. I think if a Saudi Arabian club wants to sign Kieran Trippier out of the summer, I think there's a conversation we had, and I, I do think it's a possibility that he might go there. So I'm going to add arms and legs to this because yeah. I've, I've got my own information as well on this one. Um, I think it, it does very much feel like he's heading in that direction. We've known for quite some time that there's potentially been some deal in the offing from Saudi for 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 Trippier. Obviously, he was knocked back by the deal for Bayern was knocked back. It sounds like, on a personal level, the family is prepared to up sticks yeah. and potentially move. That doesn't mean that he leaves Newcastle United, by the way. Um, but I think if Trippier goes to Saudi, I don't think his family go with him. And I think that's probably one of the hardest decisions I think you'll have to make in his career. Um, is that he's a, he is, look, we've all heard and seen, and, and not every family has difficulties, but he is a family man. He's got a lovely family with lovely kids and a lovely wife. We see it all on Instagram. Saw them the other day, actually. Did you? Yeah, it all came through. The England game at St James' Park said hello to everyone. Yeah. All together. Yeah, they're all a lovely classic. family. You can see that just by the interactions I have on, on social media. It does make you think that I think it's a big decision for him. He'll earn the kind of money that he would not earn if he spends the next 10 years playing in England. 
he'll earn that money in Saudi Arabia. And coming to 34, does is that a decision he makes? I want him to stay at Newcastle United. And the only reason I want him to stay at Newcastle United is because I think when you start draining leaders and yeah. experience like that out of a squad with some younger players, I think it's invaluable. I don't mind if Kieran Trippier stays for the next two, three years, I know he's getting on, mm. but doesn't play because he's a leader and he's, he's a quality professional who's been there, done it and has got the t-shirt and can pass that on to people in his position. But football's football and, and if it means it opens up a bit of PSR wiggle room and it also means he's literally got not got a worry for the rest of his life, which he should have probably, but not all footballers do. Yeah. Um, if he can just write off everything that's gone before and say, look, I've earned everything to, to walk away from the game with a lot of money, my head held high, then I don't blame him either. Um, so I think it, it, somebody asked me, I was on NUFC Matter, somebody asked me last night and said, who do you think is the most the first one who you think will go? And I said, I said, Kieran Trippier, for that reason. The, the information I know you've had for, you've sat on for quite some time, know, you've yeah. been a good lad with that. <laughs> you've sat on information for a while. I've just coaxed it out of him. But I've got similar information which I can't say a lot of the other stuff that I know but it sounds very much like the family was very prepared to, to up sticks from where they are and move on which will be a real shame because I, I love Kiwi Trippier I really do yeah it's one of them he's got a year left on his contract he's either going to get a new contract or he's going to be sold it's I one think. or the other that's yeah. a flip of a coin isn't it and I think if he got a new contract I don't think there'd be any disappointment I think he'd yeah, be really happy with that I think the family would be really happy with that that the, the, they're enjoying life in the North East yeah. um, but we'll see I just think from Kieran Jupiter's point of view now he's 34 September he's had a, he had a tough season generally yeah. even though he had some really high moments he probably had his lowest moments time and time again it, um, certainly during that December month he's, caught, he's going to compete in his fourth major tournament with England yeah. I think that'll be his last almost definitely his last it will be his last I think he probably he told us <laughs> um, yeah it will probably be his last and in terms of t in turning 34 later this year where else can he go now to almost try and compete football I think he's probably done what he has in his career unless Newcastle want to mount a title charge next season <laughs> maybe but you know, that's uh, that's that would dream probably a little bit there, but uh, yeah, I think from his point of view, he's in the twilight years. He's career, he's probably going to retire for the next couple of years to go over to Saudi. Let's be honest, as transformative. I like that word today, transformative. <laughs> it, it is transformative money. You know, he does a year, two years there, and then you probably set up for the rest of your life. So I do think Kieran Trippier has mine now, maybe turning towards retiring and setting up, you know, a, a good life for him and his family. What a player. And what it, and I think I it's think, not guaranteed he's going to leave, but there's it's you know there's talk. Really so so I, I'm going to tie this all in with everybody, and, and I don't know. We'll probably have to wrap up soon if we're going to do quick fire. <laughs> but I don't think there's ever enough. I talked about Pope before. There's never enough respect, in my opinion, put on the names of Callum Wilson, Miguel Almiron, and uh, Kieran Trippier, all for different reasons. I can see the merits in them leaving. I can see I could see even merits if money was unlimited, all of them staying. There would there would be merits to me in keeping every single one of those players. Miguel Almiron was. Uh, the player who heralded the, the return to Champions League football with that goal that, that, that lit the fire against PSG um, and he's had for the money that he cost the career that he's given the games he's played and goals he's scored has been a fantastic signing for Newcastle United one of Rafa's gems in many ways and there's been many many of Rafa, just Rafa's gems some of them still playing Jacob Murphy and others in, yeah. in the team now um, Callum Wilson the, the respect that gets lost on his name. I think a lot of people stroke, do this, and and this is possibly a social media generation thing. That they'll have this idea. It might be a, it might be a computer games thing, like a football manager planning type thing, where people have these silly things where they put Tossin's name already at sent off, and they get so heartbroken by the idea that he doesn't sign. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and like I, I feel like there's a little bit of that with like people in their heads now. Some people, Wilson and Trippier, there's already a line through their name. And that they're gone and they disappeared almost. We're talking about a guy who's the second best Premier League goal scorer this club's ever had. Yeah. And Callum Wilson. We're talking about a guy like I say who scored the goal that lit the fire against PSG and Miguel Almiron. And we're talking about Kieran Trippier, who in my opinion is up there with Bruno Guimaraes as the best signing made post PIF. Transformative. I'm not going to say it. I'll leave that to you. He's in your all-time Newcastle. He's in, he is my, oh, he's the best right back I think this football club ever had in the modern era. I'm not going to go into <laughs> details about who might have won the league in, in X, Y and Z a hundred years no. ago. If you watch our unpopular more. opinions, it doesn't matter because the, the levels have increased so much. Kieran I'm not saying that, Dom. You say that. You're, you, Honestly. Can, you can get the wrath of the history buffs in the uh, in the comments. doesn't matter. Yeah, right. But nowhere near that to Kieran I think it matters. 
history football started before 1945. <laughs> <laughs> 92, they normally say, but I'm going to go back to 45. <laughs> <laughs> right. Kieran Tripp, yeah. I think he might be the first to go. I hope he isn't, though. I hope he isn't. And we're going to have to go. It's probably the end for us, isn't <laughs> I it? I like how you try to. Yeah. If, we, right if we want to get this up before, yes, before right. Sella kick off. Good night from the Geordie Journals, or good morning, depending on when this actually goes up and when you're watching it. Like, comment, share, subscribe for Rivers Financial Planning, our kind sponsors for all of these long form videos or short. We'll try to make them short, but they always end up long. Right, that was Dom, <laughs> that was Jordan, this is Liam. Like, comment, share, subscribe for all your Geordie Journals content.